Alrighty, hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. How are we doing today? Today I'm joined with my dog Kaiser. In the last video you guys wanted to see him and we're kind of disappointed that he wasn't in the video, so here he is. He's my little English staffy if you don't know. Uh, next month is his first birthday, so yeah. But anyway, oh hello. Today we are going to be talking about New Zealand versus Australia bricklaying. Anyway, I'm making this video now because months and months ago when I was pumping out the bricklaying content, a lot of you guys requested me making this video uh, if I preferred New Zealand bricklaying over Australian bricklaying. Now that I'm not actually laying bricks for anyone, I'll talk about it. So I'll just start off by saying this is my opinion. Um, I'm allowed to have my own opinion. If you would like to share your opinion, you can go down in the comment section below, type out what you think about what I'm talking about, and have a discussion down there. First off, I'll just say, for those who didn't know, I am from New Zealand. I done my bricklaying apprenticeship in New Zealand. Uh, most of my bricklaying in New Zealand, I've only been bricklaying, well, I only laid bricks in Australia for just over a year. I'm just going to go out and say that I think, my personal opinion, uh, I think New Zealand bricklaying is better than Aussie bricklaying. Now let me explain a couple things. First off, I'll just start with a huge one. For those of you in other countries and places around the world, I'm not sure if this would be normal for you or you'd never hear about it, but in New Zealand, uh, when we would start a job, we would have to book uh, book an inspection. It's called a half-high inspection. You have to call up and book a half-high inspection with the council. So what that means is when you start a job, you are only allowed to take your brickwork up halfway. Um, all the way around the house, not just in parts. You're not allowed to do parts of the house, or you're not supposed to anyway. Um, and you book it for a certain date and you've got to get your house halfway high all the way around for the inspector to come and have a look down the back of your cavity see if your wall ties are clean no mortar on the ties uh, the bottom of your cavity is clean and your weep holes or washouts um, are free of crap or mud or mortar or anything down the back of the cavity um, and that doesn't happen here in Australia at all I'll just give you a couple simple comparisons. So, it would be like you doing your test in school without a teacher to mark it. Um, it'd be like doing your driving lesson, your driving test, without an instructor in the car. There's no one higher up to have a look at what you're doing. So, that's a big thing here in Australia. Uh, there's no inspections while you're laying the bricks, so um, that's one. I'd say that's one of the only reasons why there are such big um, brick laying companies in New Zealand. Oh, not in New Zealand, in Australia. That's why some uh, brick laying companies have been able to grow so big because. Uh, you don't have to wait for inspections. You can literally throw up a house in a day and carry on to the next one. Um, and that's where it gets a bit rough and a little bit dodgy because sometimes you see 10 bricklayers on a house and they get it done in a day. Uh, I've been a part of that a couple months ago, you know. You just do a house a day with 10 15 people on one house and it's just a shit show. There's just so much going on With that many people no one's on the same page. It's just absolutely hectic Whereas yeah, the difference is in New Zealand um, No one Can really get that big you see a lot more smaller crews uh, cruising around smaller crews that are 
kind of forced to take their time and do a good job because you are you're being inspected by the council if you fail that inspection they can tell you to pull all your work down and literally start again um, it's happened before it has happened so little talkie break uh, so that was inspections Australia has zero inspections while you're doing the work obviously um, site supervisors and stuff come round just for a nosy but they don't you know they don't inspect anything so yeah that's one big thing inspections New Zealand has them Aussie does not let me know in the comments below wherever you're from in the world if you're a bricklayer do you get inspections while you're laying the brick or are you able just to carry on laying your brick finish the job with no one higher up watching over you number two is pipes and things and aircon pipes and things like that in your cavity um, I think it's a big no-no having things in between your cavity uh, where the brick is able to so brick frame there should be you know a decent cavity without anything in there but in Aussie you often find aircon pipes and stuff just like you know all over the shop in New Zealand you're not allowed anything in your cavity you're not even allowed to start laying bricks if there's gonna be something in your cavity um, the cavity is there for a reason for ventilation uh, if the bricks get wet they can soak through and if there's something bridging your gap bridging the cavity to the to the frame or the building wrap uh, the moisture can just carry on through into the house and that's where big problems can happen um, so number two I mean that's a huge one I, I it's massive in New Zealand I don't know why it's different here but once again I don't know where you're from and if you lay bricks wherever you're from and you have things in the cavity or don't have things in the cavity let me know down below because I feel like that's a huge one you're not supposed to have something that could bridge the gap between your brick and your building frame number three I'll just say number three cleanliness of the cavity uh, in New Zealand we weren't allowed a single thing on brick tires or we weren't allowed any mud mortar whatever you call it um, squit like oozing out the back of your brick kind it may not bridge the gap between your brick and your frame but that doesn't that doesn't matter you weren't allowed anything so after every course I don't care if you're like an excellent brick layer and you say you don't get any mud that oozes out the back of your brick when you lay it um, if you are one of those blokes that's just perfect every damn time give yourself a pat on the back um, but after a long day's work there's bound to be a little bit of extra mud coming out the back of your brick which is no big deal you just scrape the back and it's gone get it out of the cavity um, so in New Zealand would clean the ties clean the wall ties bridging the gap so any moisture can't soak through the mortar that's sitting on the wall tie across the wall tie into your frame or into the house uh, at the end of each wall or each day um, we'd have to pull the corners of the bricks out and put a hose in there like I said wash the tires wash any dags or any mud that is in the cavity wash the bottom make sure all the weep holes have water running through them and working the way they should work um, and in Australia I have not seen that done once now at this point I'll just let you know once again this is my opinion you're entitled to yours um, but literally after every course in New Zealand we just run the trowel along the back of the bricks 
and just have it on an angle so it's not falling down the cavity you're scooping it up if there is any there uh, in Australia I've not seen it done once I've not seen any of the cavities cleaned out or any of the wheat poles yeah at the end of the day in Aussie uh, they do dig the wheat poles out with a like a jointer whatever you call it they call it wheat pole cleaner because they don't actually joint their bricks with them that's just strictly used for a wheat pole cleaner but yeah they scrape they scrape the mud out of the wheat pole but in the back of the cavity there's piles of mud around that so water can't flow down or along to the wheat poles if you know what I'm saying um, yeah you should know what I'm saying if you're a bricklayer so that's another big thing in New Zealand you wash your cavities so they are clean you could eat your breakfast out of the cavity in Aussie it's pretty uh, it's just whatever you know just slap it up if there's mud in there it doesn't really matter just make sure the wheat poles from the front are clean so you can't see any mud there but obviously shit loads of mud there whatever next all right this is another big one that I've seen Aussies do all the bricklayers I've worked with here in Aussie do this and it never happens in New Zealand ever it was completely new to me when I came here um, obviously whoever you work for you've got to kind of work with them do what they do because they're the boss so we all know when you start laying bricks um, and you start getting up a few courses windows and windows come into play when you get to certain heights and you've got to work out your cuts as best you can make it look nice yada yada uh, while in my opinion keeping your perps in line and the same what would you say keeping your perps in line all the way from bottom to top and the same width so the same size perps in line bottom to top that's what I was taught in New Zealand so if you have to put a cut in there you put a cut you don't move things along or tighten them up and change the bond now in Aussie everyone changes the bond if they can open up their bricks to make it work full bricks fulls and halves they do that um, which was like a huge huge no-no when I was in New Zealand you always want your perps lining up and your perps the same width as your bed so a 10 mil bed 10 mil perp it just looks bloody good you can't fault it um, and over here in, in Aussie I'm I'm in Aussie right now yeah if you get to a window and it can work fulls they just open the thing up and you could have joints as big as your thumb just to literally not put a cut in there which is mind-blowing and then when you get to the top of the wall and look down your bloody your bricks have you've come across 30 mil by the end of your panel and it just looks like it's like your, your perps are stepping all over the place looks bad in my opinion let me know what you guys do in that situation now everyone in Aussie is in such a mad rush to get everything done they think doing a cut or two or three is the end of the world because they don't like doing cuts here they don't like using the saw um, the saw is there for a reason if you have to put a cut in put a damn cut in that's my opinion a couple cuts here and there looks better than 20 mil perps and your bond stepping all over the place every single window my opinion another one all right so this kind of comes back to stuff being in your cavity um, I've seen some crazy crazy stuff in my year of Australian bricklaying um, 
and things have been so messed up that pipes and stuff are actually not in the cavity or in the frame that in your brickwork um, which is like mind-blowing to me but it happens um, over here not in New Zealand and uh, sometimes something's in your cavity and it's so close to the face of the brick there was literally like a 10 mil sliver of brick sitting in front of a pipe or whatever um, you know on the wall and all it would take is someone to go knock knock on this little brick and the whole thing would fall apart because there's literally nothing holding it there the whole back of the brick's been cut out for this pipe that's in the brickwork <coughs> bloody crazy stuff like that does not happen in New Zealand at this point I think I should just title this thing why New Zealand bricklaying is better than Australian bricklaying because Alright, I've got another one for you. I haven't given up thinking. Um, in Australia, if your brick's not rendered, like so, you know, someone else comes and renders the brick, every job I've done here is round jointed. Um, every single job. They just quickly go over the brick, literally in 30 seconds your whole bloody wall's done. And then brush it, and then sponge it, that's it. Now, in New Zealand, um, I don't have one on me, but we would, yeah, in New Zealand sometimes we'd round joint a house, but probably one one house out of 20 maybe for the rest of the time we would rake the joints out to a certain depth with a raker and then use these bad boys now these are not called wheat pole cleaners these are called jointers um, well, that's my opinion anyway we use these to then smooth over the joint and in doing that it compresses the mud um, and seals it right so seals it making it more waterproof weatherproof whatever you call it um, and I just think it makes it look bloody good <clears throat> now I'm saying an Aussie didn't do that once you just what are you doing back there Please. jumping around yeah, and Aussie, these were called bloody weep hole cleaners. And you just use them to scrape out mud. Mad. <coughs> <coughs> now this point is probably more to do with builders, chippies, if you're Aussie. Um, so before you get to a job and set it up and start laying bricks, the builders stand the frames, put a roof on, um, and wrap it in building wrap or building paper whatever you want to call it <clears throat> now in New Zealand they all have that wrapping the building down to a fine art like that building wrap is tight tight um, and they even go over the building wrap with a a plastic I'm not sure what you call it I don't know how to describe it but they go over it um, just securing it even more now, completely different here in Aussie. When you turn up to a job, half your bloody wraps hanging off the house. There's holes and stuff everywhere. Um, if water was to get in there, it's going straight through, straight in the house. Yeah. If you have, been, if you are a bricklayer or whatever work in the industry in Aussie, you know what I'm talking about. Some of them some of them just have building wrap on the bloody bottom and don't care about the top in New Zealand bricklaying is like a weatherproofing thing uh, in Aussie they just call it a skin um, they don't really care for it 
um, weatherproofing wires, I guess. Um, and they say the paper, you know, is the real one that holds the keeps the moisture out of the house and stuff. But brings me back to what I just said. So, half of them, the paper's not even bloody there, or it's got holes big enough you could walk through. That also comes back to inspectors in New Zealand. If there was a little rip in the paper, or you could see light coming through, you'd have to tape that up. You weren't allowed to carry on bricklaying. You'd have to put something over it. Flashing tape, anything, some, something. Um, but because no inspections happen in Australia, literally bricks go up when there's holes in the building wrap you could walk through, like I said. There's probably more I could talk about, but I didn't write any ideas down. Those are just off the top of my head. Um, so yeah, if you've got an opinion like I do on the matter and you want to share it, leave it down in the comments below. I'll have a read. I'll see if it's, uh, you know, same kind of opinion as mine or completely different and have a chat with you down there but that probably brings this uh, video to a close I fly out back to work tomorrow and there's very very limited Wi-Fi out there um, and they don't actually let you go on YouTube because that'll just suck all the all the internet gone so once I post this video I won't really be able to see for a little while what you guys think about it, if you hate it, if you love it, if you agree with me, if you don't. Um, but I will eventually have a look at it when I'm not in no man's land. Um, so if you did enjoy this or did not, give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down if that's the way you feel. Once again, it was just completely my opinion, which I am entitled to have. Um, this is not directed at anyone, this is just what I've seen on the building sites in Australia versus New Zealand, my home where I learnt the trade. Uh, yeah, so from Kaiser and I, we'll see you next time. Hey, hey. Oh, you're a big winger. You're okay. <laughs>